Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for thanks for joining today. My name is uh, Brett Fisher. I'm the Senior Director of uh, Outbound Product Management at ServiceNow, um, looking after the workplace service delivery product. And I'm joined by my colleague, Elizabeth Bulling, who um, is also on our, our product management team. Um, I'm relatively new to uh, ServiceNow. If we haven't met yet, uh, happy to find some some time to, to chat if you uh, reach out to me. Um, uh, and um, yeah, really looking forward to, um, to discussing what's in our latest release, which uh, which was just uh, just GA in uh, May, and we've made a number of improvements on the, the workplace service delivery application. Um, as uh, as with everything uh, related to a public company, um, we um, will talk about roadmap today, and um, and of course we may or may not uh, actually deliver on the the commitments that um, that we've uh, made, and that's the sort of the na nature of a safe harbor statement. Uh, next slide. Um, just in, in the future, we've got a couple webinars coming up. Uh, one webinar in particular is in uh, in two weeks. We're going to be presenting um, on our facility management strategy. And so that's an area that we're moving into. And we're excited to um, to talk with you all about um, our, uh, our movement into facility management. So if you um, have not um, already signed up for that webinar, um, you can um, uh, either use that QR code or uh, actually the same webinar link that you use to sign up for this webinar, um, you can use to sign up for, for that one as well. So we're um, we're particularly excited about our, our uh, foray into facility management, and um, we'll be talking um, about um, our capabilities uh, in a couple of weeks on that on that webinar. So very exciting. Um, uh, in terms of just some quick housekeeping for today, uh, we'll do a Q and A after the presentation. Um, use the Q and A feature uh, to ask questions throughout the session. Um, when you uh, are um, at, uh, asking questions, feel free to introduce yourself, um, and um, the session will be recorded and placed on the community forum. And then after the session, uh, we'll do a survey. Um, if you uh, have any feedback, um, we we greatly appreciate it. Uh, just just fill out and uh, and you know again, if if you have any um, comments for Elizabeth or I, uh, just reach out to us directly as well. Um, so in terms of today's agenda, we're going to talk about a couple things. Uh, we'll we'll give you a summary of all of the new uh, features that we've launched in our May release. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about our support for occupancy sensors. I'm particularly excited about this one um, because our um, our capability from an occupancy sensor will allow us to bring in uh, live data from the Verge senses and other um, other sensor partners directly into the application and do things like create heat maps so that um, you can understand where people are sitting and uh, where they're not sitting. Um, we've also made some significant investments in employee presence. We'll talk a little bit about that. Um, and as well as our case management workspace and mobile agent for uh, workplace agent for mobile, um, both of these are uh, sort of the, the beginning of our foray into facility management. And so, um, if you think about the ability for a technician um, to to do everything uh, from a mobile app, um, that's that's where that's that's headed. And if you again, if you know one one of the one of the most mobile enabled um, sort of job personas. Um, is um, is the notion of a technician or a facilities technician or a wrench turner. And so um, launching the mobile will enable us to move into that facility management space. And we're particularly excited about that. Um, we also have some enhancements from a space and move perspective, as well as reservation management. Um, reservation management is now configurable, for example, which I know that uh, many, many of you have been asking for. Um, and so Elizabeth will do a demo of all of these functionalities and, and talk at a high level about what they uh, what they provide. So again, we're really excited about um, what we have uh, to, to release in, in our uh, most recent release. Um, next slide. Um, and then just a reminder, in terms of the product evolution, uh, you know, we started the workplace service delivery application back in 2020. Um, which, which was very much a COVID return to work uh, application. And we were sort of trying to figure out what would stick. Um, we started, you know, we did vaccines, we did contact tracing, we did um, a social distancing in the workplace. And it turns out that um, most, of the, most of those items have obviously since, um, uh, you know, fallen off, right, as we've um, gotten back into the office. But there's two areas that did stick. One was health and safety, and the other one um, is, um, is, is uh, the, the, what started as reservation management now is workplace service delivery. And you can see the evolution of the product over the past couple of years uh, here on this slide. Um, we, you know, again, initially in 2021 started with reservation management, but then moved into space and um, uh, moved into the employee experience um, and, um, and then continued to make some enhancements um, around that capability. And then in 2022, 2023, we started to invest into, um, you know, full-blown space management um, as part of the market demand um, and, um, and 
I think now we're actually in a new quadrant that Gartner and Verdantix have, have recognized um, in, in terms of the quote unquote um, workplace experience applications. And so um, we're, we're particularly excited to be a market leader in that space. Um, if you haven't read, read the, the new um, Gartner um, uh, market guide for, um, for workplace experience, we're featured in that. And we're particularly excited about um, how the market is, is looking at our solutions um, that, are, that are focused on sort of the intersection of employee experience and, and workplace. Um, but then also, in addition to that, we're sort of moving right in that schema into, um, into more of the administrative capabilities that are necessary to have a competitive um, solution in the market. So, um, so really, really excited about where the product has come um, over the past couple of years. That's actually part of the reason I joined ServiceNow is because of how excited I am about, um, about the direction of this product. Um, and um, also really excited about where we're going to be taking it. And so um, for, for our customers, for you all, um, that's, uh, that's an area that I'm, I could be more excited to collaborate with you all. In. Um, so Elizabeth, I'm going to pass it off to you now. Um, why, don't you, um, why don't you take over and um, you talk, talk through uh, the capabilities that we've released? And I think you're going to do a demo as well. Yeah, thank you very much, Brett. So just moving forward. Uh, Brett did give you an overview of some of the capabilities that we'll be discussing today, so I might go very briefly over this slide just to show you that we are in, in innovating in all of our modules, so we release again four times a year. This means a lot of innovation comes into WSD uh, in the terms of employee experience is what we, I'm going to show you today in terms of uh, the employee presence, but also the, the reservation components and then your indoor mapping and being able to visualize a lot more uh, the way spaces are laid out, but also who's assigned to those spaces, who's, res who's reserved those spaces, really providing a visual way for employees to interact. And then again, always enhancing on that facility side of things where we can help space planners be able to better manage their spaces with quite a few innovations we've done in terms of space management, but also being able now to get them real-time data. So near real-time data with occupancy sensors and also being able to visualize that on maps. So I'm not gonna say more on this slide. I'm gonna go into each of these specific uh, new enhancements, give you kind of an overview, and then we'll go into an instance and kind of visualize uh, how that experience would look like. So I just want to get started when it's one of our, our main major new features that we're releasing as part of Workplace Connectors. Just a reminder for everyone, Workplace Connectors was released last year, and this is the real aim for this module is really to be able to connect with all kind of sensors, all kind of badging systems to really get uh, data to our employees, but also data to our facility managers to make sure they understand who's present in the building, which spaces are being used, uh, what kind of uh, experience is the uh, employee actually having. So getting that real data so they can couple that with uh, the way that they've assigned spaces by department, by cost center, coupling that all the information together to be able to make informed decisions. So the way we included uh, the occupancy senses is that we now support uh, different integrations with occupancy sensors. This is either by a partnership that we now have with Metricus, but also other uh, partner solutions that are building integrations to be able to uh, capture all of that uh, information from the sensors to be able to push it into WSD, into the occupancy tables, where we can then have different use cases and showcase that information uh, to the employee. So the different use cases that we've released here in May is really to enable the employee to understand how can they make a reservation based on real-time data? Is someone actually sitting in that space? Do they want to reserve a space where someone's already sitting? How many people are sitting in that space? So really being able to visualize on the map uh, the occupancy of uh, the different locations, but also providing a way to uh, automate the check-in. So we have a lot of organizations that require check-in when so a reservation is made and to ensure that we automate this process, what we want to do and what we can now do with these occupancy sensors is as soon as someone is detected in that room that's been reserved, it will automatically check in that user. However, if that user does not show up in some kind of time frame, it could be 10, 15 minutes, this um, occupancy sensor will detect that no one's present in the room and that will then push them uh, a notification saying, would you like to check into the room uh, as you'll be coming to the room, so keep that reservation for you, or do you want to free up the space so someone else can actually make that reservation? So really providing that uh, step to the user to kind of remove some of the extra steps they have to make today that is more manual of being able to check in either via the QR code or going into their, to their mobile device to be able to do the check-in. So what I want to do is just go over to uh, an, uh, an instance and be able to show you exactly how the information will be shown to the user. So what I'm going to do is go uh, to my employee center. Right now, I'm logged in as uh, Sarah. I'm just going to refresh my page, make sure uh, everything will work. What I'm going to do is go to the location directory. So just as a reminder for everyone, the location directory 
is used by employees to be able to go and visualize either a card view, so the different uh, buildings I have throughout my organization, be able to have a map view of it, and then from there be able to raise a case, get directions, so use the wayfinding capabilities. But we can now also be able to view this um, real-time uh, sensor data from that map. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going to building A. Let's select floor two, because I have a couple more meeting rooms, a couple more desks. It's just going to load that map with the information in terms of which spaces right now. This is using the reservation data, so which spaces are available versus which spaces uh, have been reserved. Just want to mention, side note, there's another part here that we've innovated in May is really providing this visualization in the location directory that was not there before. This kind of view was previously only available in the reservation portal. What we've done is enable it uh, in this view so that a user can not only raise a case on a specific space or get directions, they can also select it and reserve it directly from this location directory. So to be able to uh, quickly reserve that space or get directions or use the three dots, as I mentioned, to be able to raise an issue. But what I want to get to here is really talk about the occupancy census. How do we overlay the data on that map? So easily using that, the, the gear icon on the side of the map, I have different options. Uh, so from previously uh, previous releases, we have already the possibility of looking at uh, who are uh, showing the names of the people that are permanently assigned to desks. I still have that capability here. But what we've also added is the way of displaying the information coming in from those sensors. So if I select display the sensor information, I'm going to have it process and it's going to tell me in real time uh, exactly right now what spaces are being occupied. So we can see the map kind of shifted from having a lot of available spaces to a, uh, a lot more red spaces that are actually showing me um, that these spaces are actually occupied. They might not be reserved, but we can see that the sensor is picking up information that someone, at least one person, is within that room. But I can get more information. I can actually select one of those spaces and I can get the information in, the ter in terms of a small pill that will also appear above uh, that space information so I can see it's available, meaning it's not being reserved. So we're coupling here both reservation data along with the sensor data so I can see it's uh, available to be reserved. So I still have the option to reserve it. But I can see that right now it's occupied by 11 people. The sensors are picking up 11 people within that meeting room. So it's given me information that perhaps I might not want to reserve that space because right now I know it's occupied. So it's not, uh, I, I don't really want to make a reservation and go and kick those people out, however I could. Uh, it's going to really give me information of which room should I actually select in place of that one. I can see that this one here is green. Uh, it's available. No one's res uh, reserved it. And it's not currently occupied. So the, the sensors aren't detecting anyone in that room. So that's one of the use cases we've got with this new um, occupancy, occupancy sensor integration. And as I said, we have the second uh, experience, which is really checking in that user, providing that automated check-in. That's what I wanted to show you in terms of the uh, occupancy uh, item that we released within uh, the May release. And I now want to move on to some of the other uh, major items that we also released because, I, as I said, we've got quite a few to go through today. The next one I really want to show you is the employee presence. This is really, we want to uh, optimize the way that employees interact with the workplace. We know that employees go into the workplace, go into the office to be able to collaborate with people. People don't just go into the office usually to go and sit by themselves or go and, because um, they could sit by themselves at home. They really want to go into the office to be able to collaborate. And understanding when my colleagues go into the office is really important to make sure that when I do go to the office, it's a collaborative time and I uh, can collaborate with the people I uh, usually need to do work with. So the people I'm either in meeting rooms with, in meetings with, uh, or the people I have to get work done with. So this uh, employee presence was actually released last year. We've done a lot of enhancements during this release to really provide a visual way, a dashboard, uh, a calendar view where the uh, employee can actually visualize uh, from a glance from the days of the week, what day he plans on being in the office along with some insights in terms of uh, how many of his collaborators are going in, but also which collaborators are going in and then easy ways to make a quick reservation and decide that uh, I'm also want to declare my intent of going into the office that day because I can see maybe that 60% of my collaborators will be there. So I know that uh, I'll be able to see them in person. So what I want to show you uh, is how this experience would look like within the instance. So I'll just go back to my instance. Uh, here we're still in the location directory. What I'm going to do is use my workplace services and then go to employee presence. This is the same path that was used during the last release. What, what you will see here is that this page has really been enhanced. So the way that this has been filled out is still taking in, into account everything that was previously released. So previously it was just uh, setting uh, from a... Um, 
a view of all the different days, what days I actually wanted to declare my intent of going in. So declaring my routine so my collaborators could see when I was planning in, but also defining a collaborator list of understanding which routine uh, would I like to see? So which employees would I like to see their intent to go into the office? So just for people that weren't familiar with that version, I'm also going to show, show you how that was actually um, created by uh, this employee. So being able to hear, uh, Maria is actually going to de declare that she wants to go to the office two days a week. So her intent is really to go into the office two days a week and the days that she has currently chosen are Tuesday and Thursday. By having this set, this is going to be uh, kept in memory by the system. And every week it's also going to uh, show to her collaborators that she'll be planning on going there Tuesdays and Thursdays. At any time she can come and make changes and say that she also wants to go Wednesday, in which case this will also update it for her collaborators. So having defined that, she can then go ahead and define her list of collaborators. So the collaborators will be people that she usually works with, people that uh, are in her same office, so perhaps people she usually goes for lunch with, people she goes running with in the evening. She wants to know when they go to the office so that she can plan around uh, when they're going so that she can uh, plan her week accordingly and perhaps change her routine to match some of those employees. So what she's done here is add, uh, using this uh, the small drop down list, add the different collaborators by searching for them in the list and here has defined her specific collaborators list. She can have a quick glance here of the different routines they've set. Some of them haven't set any, uh, some of them have set multiple days of the week. So she can have a quick glance at that, but she can also understand that today, what is their kind of status today? Are they remote today? Are they in the office today? Uh, kind of have that at a glance and see really when they're, what their, their plan is for today. She can also see if some of these employees are assigned to a permanent desk or a permanent office, she can also have the information here. And by that, she can even just click on it and it will open up in the location directory and show her exactly where that employee will be sitting, where their, their permanent desk is actually assigned within that uh, specific location. And then from there, she can actually, this location directory, as I mentioned, she can also select a nearby space to be able to book a desk near them for the day, perhaps. So if I just go back to my portal, another main uh, major item that we added is uh, the factor of privacy. So maybe I don't want to uh, show my routine to the entire workplace. Maybe I want to keep it uh, only for me. So what we've added is a possibility to define, is it public? Meaning everyone who's in the workplace can search for me and can actually see uh, my specific routine I've set, or I can have it as a private mode, meaning I don't want any of the employees knowing when I'm going into the office. So she has the, on her user level, she has the possibility of defining that. So once what she's uh, once Sarah has actually defined all of this, she can just go ahead and generate her dashboard. Her dashboard is gonna give her the week view. So week by week, of uh, what is what she's planned, so what she's configured uh, within her settings. So she's defined that she wants to go there Tuesday and Thursday. So this for every week, let's just go to the next week so I can show you. It's gonna show her that she's planned on going to the office on Tuesday, but also Thursday. We can see that the other days she's planned on being remote. What Sarah can also see is some kind of insights. She'll be able to see different insights that the admin in the back end can actually configure. So the first one she'll be seeing here is the admin has configured that they want to be able to show a first notification with the policy of the, the organization. The organization that Sarah works for here requires the employees to be uh, in the office at least three days uh, in the week. And she can see that right now, based on what she's set going in on Tuesday and Thursday, that's only two days. So right now she's not compliant. So it's just giving her a notification that how is she doing it against that uh, company policy? So it's, it's not going to prompt her to, to make any action. It's just going to give her that warning uh, that insight that the, the company policy is three days. So from there, if we just go back to this current week, so today she's uh, Sarah is in the office, she made a reservation for a specific location to be able to sit uh, in, in the, the building A of Santa Clara at that specific desk. She could make another reservation by clicking this reservation, she'll be able to open the reservation portal and make a reservation perhaps for a meeting room, for a locker, for a parking space. And all this information will then be pulled here and shown to her on her uh, calendar planner, let's call it. But Sarah can also see other insights, which will help her guide, which will kind of guide her in the process of should she make the decision of going into the, the office on Friday. So she can see that in one of the insights, it's showing her out of the list of collaborators she's got, 44% of them actually plan on being in the office on Friday. So she might want to rethink that it's the same amount that went into the office today. She can see also the list of people that plan on being in the office 
uh, if she has a project to work on or continue working on or would like to go for lunch with them, she can understand that they plan on also being there Friday. So she might want to decide that she'd also be in the office. So it will be changing her status just for that day from being remote in the office. This will not change her general routine that she set. It will just change it for that specific day. From here, she can also define that she's going to be visiting another office. Perhaps she'll be traveling that day and working from another uh, location that the organization has offices. And from there, she can just uh, decide to visit another office and then she'll be prompted to fill out which office will, will she be traveling to so that the users will also be prompted and shown that she'll be traveling in uh, for users that have her in the collaborators list and aren't currently in the same location. They will have that information that she'll tr be traveling into that location. And by declaring, so let's say if I declare that I want to be in the office, we can see that we get one more insight. And by declaring that she's going to be in the office on a day that she's usually planned to be remote is going to open an exception. So showing her that visual on the calendar that that day is an exception uh, and that it's not a usual day that she plans on being in the office. So these different banners, so the first banner, the insight, the exception, uh, the collaborators, all of these are generated through uh, proactive prompts. This is an extra plugin which is used, uh, which is part of the platform where uh, um, that an admin can actually configure which different uh, prompts they want to show the user in terms of, do they want to show insights based on the collaborators? Do they want to show the insight based on the exception? The ones that I've showed you today are actually out of the box. So they come with the plugin, but this could also be an example of, I want to actually uh, help get my employees back into the office. So I might want to actually create a proactive prompt where I'm gonna show events happening in the office. So maybe on Friday, there's a big all hands event. I want, the, I want Sarah to be able to see that. So she also takes it into consideration uh, that there'll be a big company event or there'll be a specific lunch or there'll be an event in the evening. Uh, I want her to also have that information. So all of that can be configured within that proactive prompt uh, plugin to be able to visualize it uh, on this dashboard. And I do want to mention before we get to the next feature is that this experience is also available on mobile. So everything I did here from defining my routine to changing my day on Friday, I can do all of that directly from my mobile device. That was for employee presence. We can now move on to one of our next features. So as Brett said, we really are looking at some of the facility manage management uh, items. And one of them is really looking, focusing at the case manager. How can we improve the case manager's experience, uh, making sure that on his day-to-day -day basis, he can get all the information, but he can also get key metrics uh, from the different cases that are raised within the workplace. And one of this intent is really to uh, combine the experience that we already have through Workplace Central Workplace Central, as I want to remind everyone that this is really, we call this the home zone for every space planner, facility manager, where they can get insights on everything uh, within the workplace in terms of lease, uh, the, the lease administration component, the maintenance management component, the event planner, the uh, move scheduler. Having all of those modules within one location really facilitates their life. So they have one location to go to and be able to get all of the different insights. And then from there, be able to have those reporting capabilities to make sure that they are managing their workplace correctly and that they can then make decisions on uh, being able to optimize their space perhaps. And so from this main dashboard that I'll show you just in a minute within the instance, the case manager can actually easily assign some of the cases to different groups or a specific person. They can, be, they can uh, be able to make changes to those cases, get the full detail in terms of who raised the case, uh, have the location on the map, be able to view all the uh, child cases, child tasks that are assigned to them. So really have that visual within that workplace central location. So I'll just go into the instance and show you from the facility manager, what would they uh, be able to see? So I'm just gonna refresh. So right now uh, I'm, I'm logged into a user that has access to Workplace Central where they can have all of this visual of, in terms of, as I was mentioning, the facility management capabilities. So really looking at uh, how can they plan their space? How can they see how their space is being used? How can they look at their leases? How can they look at maintenance? How can they look at the occupancy? And how can they have different dashboards that want to, if they want to combine uh, how many people were in the office, how many reservations were made, really be able to create their, their own dashboards. So from here, from Workplace Central, what I want to show you is the new capability of case management. So this case management is going to show the case manager a quick overview of some of the top uh, KPIs that are linked to these cases. So for this uh, case management, this is going to be able to show every single case uh, which is generated through, through the workplace. This could be a catering request. This could be a general request. 
This could be a move case. This could be a maintenance case. We want to show all the different types of cases and really have this in a centralized way so they can view all the different cases and then assign them to the right people uh, or right groups. So from here, you should be able to get that overview out, as I was saying. So the list of all the cases that are open, uh, all the cases that are breaching SLAs, all the cases that haven't been assigned yet, but also some of the cases, if some of the cases require approval, she'll be able to also view that uh, at a glance uh, in this dashboard. She'll also be able to get a, a couple of trends, so understanding over the past 30 days, the amount of cases that were open versus closed, so she can kind of evaluate uh, how the team's doing, or uh, do any, does she see any uh, way of uh, optimizing the ways that these cases are being treated? She can also be able to filter and, and understand the volume of cases based on the type of case and has some basic possibilities of filtering here to maybe she only wants to look at uh, the specific catering or the, uh, the requests for equipment. She'll be able to uh, easily filter on that to be able to get uh, to them very easily. If she continues scrolling down on this specific uh, workspace, she'll be able to get the full list of every single case which has been open based on uh, every, everything that uh, is coming in from the workplace. So as I mentioned, this could be a move case, this could be a, a reservation, a catering, we can have maintenance cases. She'll be able to view all of those and very easily assign them. So let's take the example of the move case. We'll just go into one of these cases just to see the information that uh, Sarah, the move, uh, the case manager will be able to visualize. So what you can see here is really an overview of all the details. So who opened the case? When was it open? Uh, what's the specific location? What needs to be done? Who is it assigned to? Right now it's assigned to no one. So she could easily assign it to a group or assign, assign it to a person. And she can then view the different details in terms of are there any chart cases, chart tasks? Were there any approvals? Are there any case SLAs that she wants to add to it? Are there any knowledge? Uh, everything around the case that is that was already part of case management. What she can also see here are some new options to be able to look uh, and easily resolve the case. This is going to also help the agent in understanding what needs to be done to complete the case. So understanding, uh, does she want to attach any knowledge articles that are uh, relevant to this move? Are there also any attachments that she would like to include? Would she like to include a template on the way that this needs to be uh, fulfilled? One of the items here is also being able to uh, visualize on the map uh, what needs to be done. So this is a move case. So this is moving an employee from one location to another. So what she can visualize here is understanding where is that employee moving from and then where are they moving to? So being able to be able to visualize the um, the locations directly from that map, uh, which the, the agent will be able to also uh, utilize to understand where the action needs to take place. And then last but not least, there's also a possibility of including a checklist. So making sure again, that when once she once this is filled out and sent over to the agent to, to complete, that a full checklist is uh, also added to the case to make sure that every step uh, is done to make sure the case is uh, closed successfully. So having said that, I want to go back to uh, the slides and I want to mention that we have a brand new application, which is really specific to our workplace agent uh, persona. So the workplace agent is could be also the technician, could be the fulfiller of the case. What they do on their day-to-day -day, uh, job is really complete these cases. So prior to this release, everything was done on the desktop. Uh, however, we do know that employees don't generally walk around completing their cases by the desktop. That's what, this is why we want to make sure that we provide mobility and improve the productivity of these uh, agents by providing them with this mobile device where they can go about their day-to-day -day job and have everything available, available to them on mobile. So not only understanding what's in the case, but also understanding where the case needs to be fulfilled. So also adding that mapping uh, component. So the same map, which is made available to employees when making a reservation, when raising a case, when asking for directions, that same map will be utilized for this agent persona to be able to go and fulfill the case that has been assigned to him or to the group uh, he's attached to. And this is also going to provide him with ease of updating the case. So uh, in case he would like to add comments, in case he would like to create a, a child task to it, uh, in case you'd like to update the status of this case, everything can be done directly from that mobile experience to make sure that he's saving time and doing everything on the spot and uh, closing the cases uh, as he as he goes about his job. So this again, this is a, I just want to make sure this is clear that this is not the same uh, application as the now mobile that employees use. This is really a, a mobile application which is dedicated to those fulfillers, technicians, workplace agents. Where did my slides go? Oh, here we go. 
So now I wanted to move on. I know we've got a lot of innovation. This is probably a lot to take in. So I do want to mention we do have a blog available on community, which will go through again all of these different steps, and you can go through those uh, at your at your pace. But I just want to give you a glance. And as I said, we do innovate a lot, so we've got a, a lot of new features. So it might be a lot to take in, but you can always uh, take a look at the recording of this or uh, consult the the blog that that explains this specific release. So I want to cover some of the highlights we have in terms of the space and move management enhancements. We've made some enhancements to some of the existing features. So the first one being that we can now uh, provide moves. So providing the, the facility manager, the move manager, the space planner with a way of triggering moves between floors uh, directly from the map view. So being able to view the map through map-based space administration and being able to see where employees are assigned and then easily selecting them to be able to move them to either a different building or be able to move them to another floor. And this is really providing them with an easy way instead of uh, previously uh, kind of looking at lists and forms of how can I uh, reassign some of my employees and move them between floors. And this is really providing that visual way of uh, making those changes much easier. And then the second enhancement is regarding the scenario planning. So scenario planning is not a new capability. It's been a one uh, available for over a year now. What we've done is really enhance on this in ways to facilitate the way that we can create scenarios using neighborhoods. So we have the possibility today to be able to create neighborhoods based on uh, cost centers, based on departments. But we also want to provide a way for uh, the space planner facility manager to be able to make uh, adjustments to neighborhoods. So assigning uh, specific employees to a neighborhood and having that in a visual way is really going to improve that experience to, to make it easier for them to make those assignments. So having said that on the two features, I do want to show you uh, in an, in the instance what would that, that would that experience would actually look like for the for the space planner. So I'm just going back to the dashboard and we'll go through those two different in, uh, enhancements in just a second. So the first one of those is regarding uh, scenario planning. So just taking a step back here to make sure that everyone is aligned on uh, this uh, space optimization, which is part of Workplace Central. This is really a way for space planners to be able to either make uh, adjustments in real time. So using the map based space administration, being able to change assignments, change uh, a space from being permanent to being flexible, changing some of the cost centers, uh, really making that those changes in real time. And then we have the second component, which is scenario planning, really enabling this, uh, the space planner to be able to make, uh, create what if scenarios. So taking the layout of how the building is today and then saying, what if I change this floor around? What if I change the layout of this one? What if I changed uh, some of the assignments, uh, some of the cost centers, creating different plans of uh, what if scenarios. And then uh, once validation of that, being able to deploy it, and then only after that affecting the real time, uh, the real time data. So the first item I want to show you is, as I mentioned, the enhancement to the scenario planning. And for that, we'll go through the uh, this uh, scenario, which, is, which has already been created. So what I can see here as part of scenario planning are two different views. I've got one view which shows me the stack plan, where I can see, uh, based on my two floors, how are my, um, how, how my space is actually assigned. Right now, I've got them. Uh, I'm viewing this scenario by neighborhood. So being able to visualize that on my floor one, I've got two different neighborhoods. I've got one that has uh, product and financing and the second one that is only dedicated to finance. And then on my second floor, I've got four different uh, four different neighborhoods. And then if I go to the map view, I also have the possibility of seeing this, but I can see it in a more visual way where I can actually see how my neighborhoods are uh, spread out based on the floor. So if I go back to my stack plan, what we've uh, added to this experience is really providing the space plan to be able to select any neighborhood and then visualize more information based on the insight uh, on the assignment within that neighborhood. So understanding how many profiles are assigned to that neighborhood, uh, what's the ratio? So how many assignments uh, is the ratio showing, but also how many uh, unassigned profiles uh, are there? And then also here providing the way of editing the user assignments. So by selecting the, the edit user assignment, I can actually visualize who is part of this neighborhood. So neighborhoods are usually used uh, in terms of space planning, where I can define and understand where my employees sitting, which part, of, which neighborhood are they part of, but also in terms of reservation. So if I want uh, my engineering neighborhood to only be reserved by the people that work in this neighborhood, 
I'm going to define a neighborhood and restrict those spaces specifically to them. So there's different use cases uh, that utilize neighborhoods. So what I can do here is actually look at who's been assigned to this specific engineering uh, neighborhood and then decide to, I can remove some of these. I can select them and I can remove them. Or I can also add more people. So if I want to add more people to my neighborhood uh, so that they can be also assigned to that specific uh, neighborhood. So really providing an easy way uh, instead of having to go uh, into the back end of the solution where they can define the neighborhood and then select the assignments, really providing it in this centralized location where they can make adjustments to the layout. So how do I assign my different spaces? And then go more granular in terms of I've assigned these spaces to this neighborhood. I also want to change the assignments of the employees that are actually assigned to that neighborhood. So that's the first enhancements in terms of uh, the neighborhood. If I go to my second one, as I mentioned, we can now do moves uh, into and intra floors. This is done by map-based space administration. So this is affecting uh, real-time data. So when I create a move, it actually creates a move case and that will go to the case workspace that we just went over. So providing uh, a way of doing that much easily. So if I'm just gonna click on my building A, it's going to take a couple of seconds to load. What we can also see here is we have different views. So we have the stack plan and we have the, the floor plan. If I move to my floor plan, this is where we've added the capability, is being able to visualize, just like in scenario planning, how my different departments laid out. If I go to floor two, it makes it much easier because there's a few more desks. If I go to my floor two, I can also see that I've got a certain, assign a certain amount of assignments. I've got some employees that are assigned to a location and I've got different... Uh, departments. What I can see here is we have a new uh, icon which is shown on the white on the right side of the screen. Where I can actually select this, and it's going to switch the the view that I currently have. It's going to add a lot more detail in terms of employees and in terms of move cases that will actually be shown on the map. So what I can see here is the employees that are assigned to specific spaces. So I can see a small legend here of. I've got just a small uh, icon where it's got a user in, which is showing me where an employee is assigned. Then I have another icon, which is a user plus an arrow. So showing me that this is actually a move case. So saying that the employee is either moving in or moving out of that space. And if I want to get more information on those users, I can just select one of those and it's going to show me exactly uh, the information on it. So it's going to show me that this one, it had a small arrow on it. It showed me that this is a move case that's been generated for Eileen. Eileen is actually income into this location. And I have the direct uh, reference to the move case that that was created from. So I can see that this is the place she's actually moving from, and this is the space that she'll be moving to. So having that information directly on the map to be able to show me uh, specifically for that employee. I can select any other employees. So if I select someone that doesn't have an arrow on their name, I can see that Abraham Lincoln is actually uh, currently assigned to that location. Uh, the specific desk on floor two of building A, I can either decide to unassign them or I can decide to actually move them to a new assignment. So from that, it's, it's going to directly uh, pre-fill the building A. And what I can do is then decide, do I want to just assign him to a building or do I want to be more granular and assign him to a new desk or just to a specific floor or to an area? So if we decide to, to move him to a new space, it's going to pre-fill that floor too. I can actually decide to change that. Then I can fill out any of the information in terms of, does it is it in a specific area? And then is it in a specific space? But if I want to get more information, I can just view the spaces. So it's going to give me a better idea of where the spaces are. So I can perhaps say that I want to assign them here. I can either uh, select it in here or I can select the specific space and it will pre-fill um, that specific uh, field. So if I just go back, this is for employees that are already uh, assigned within this building, within this location. But I can also decide that I've got an employee, I've got employees in the building B, and I'd like to actually move him them here to building A, where I've got employees that aren't assigned at all, and I actually want to be able to search for them uh, and be able to allocate them to this specific building. So if I look, for example, for Abel, Abel right now is assigned to building B. You can see right now here I'm in building A. I might want to move uh, Abel and assign him now to building A. So change that assignment. So what I'm going to see is be able to select him here. I can move him to, and we can see this is also going to pre-fill building A uh, as it will come as the default of reassigning him to, to this building. Then again, I can select whatever uh, space or floor, let's say I just want to assign him to a floor currently. It's going to uh, gray out the other spaces so I can't select them. And it's going to give me the choice of the different floors I have within this building to actually select. So if I select floor one, apply, 
It's going to ask me to confirm if I want to move uh, able, and I can then confirm this. And this is going to generate a move case for able for moving him from building B to building A. So that's an overview of what we've added, we've added in terms of uh, move management and space management enhancements. We can now go back to go through some of the reservation uh, enhancements we've added uh, during our main release. So in our main release, as I showed you very briefly, we now have the possibility to reserve directly from the location directory. So using that, uh, that directory, which is also used for raising cases, ask for wayfinding, and where we can now also see if we do have uh, an integration with uh, occupancy sensors where I can also get that information. So really providing me with an ease of uh, reserving from another location. We've made enhancements in terms of the reservation portal in two different ways. We have one, uh, we've made enhancements on now we can not only uh, look for where people are permanently assigned, but we can also switch the map from showing the names of spaces to the names of employees that have actually reserved so making it easier for me, instead of uh, looking for a space to reserve next to a specific colleague, if I want to search for multiple colleagues, it's easier to just switch the, the filter on the map to be able to visualize that. And I'll show you just in a couple of minutes uh, what that looks like within the instance. And then last but not least, this has been a, a big request in terms of uh, uh, preventing organizations of customizing the, the reservation portal, is really providing a new way to add additional fields to uh, the reservation widget. So in terms of when I make a reservation today, I have to input the subject. I can input who this reservation is for. I can define, is it, um, do I need a, a virtual uh, link? So is it gonna be also on Zoom or on Teams? Define an agenda, but what I can also do now as a reservation admin is also define uh, some additional questions. Maybe I want to have more information for my reporting in terms of, is this gonna be an internal meeting? Is this a customer meeting? Is this a client meeting? or which cost center is actually making this reservation. So prompting the user to be able to fill out more information on why they, they're reserving the space so that then the team behind that does the reporting uh, can actually have more uh, information. So really providing that reservation admin with uh, an ease of configuring that uh, reservation page. So this is done by a, re uh, a record producer. It's uh, changed at the reservable module level. So the reservation admin will go through configuring uh, the reservable module, which is used to define the type of space and the criteria behind it. Is it an all day reservation? Is it allowing invitees? Uh, you can configure all of that within the reservable module. And now adding to that capability is really providing a way to attach the record producer where you can uh, add all of those extra questions. So I'll just go into an instance and show you briefly how some of those uh, features I just mentioned uh, would look like. So I'll just start briefly with the uh, one around reservation directly from the location directory, as this one I showed you at the start of the presentation. It's really providing a way for the user to be able to not only here be able to get directions to that location, open a case, but also be able to reserve it directly from this page. The other items I wanted to show you are within the, the reservation portal. So we'll go to make a reservation. What I can do here is the same as usual, is define which module I actually want to reserve. So hoteling space, meeting room, event, what, however uh, the organization has it set up. I can select my building. None of that has changed. I'm just going to remove the warning message. I can see here that I've got uh, available desks to reserve, or hoteling spaces, as they call in, in this organization. And I can see that some are available, whereas some are also booked. If I want to, let's say, I want to go into the office, I want to make a reservation close to my colleagues, I want to sit near Brett, but also near Scott. Right now, if I use the browse near a person, I can search for one person only, but I want to understand where my team is sitting. So what I'm going to do here is actually use the, the gear icon where, where I can define what would I like to see on the map. So if I want to show who's booked, who's already made a reservation within the, this specific floor, I can decide to, to select the show name of the person who booked the space, and if I apply that, I'm going to see that the, the reserved spaces are going to switch from the name of the space to the name of the employee that actually made the reservation. So if I zoom in just to show you, I can see that these spaces no longer have the name of the space, but have the name of the employee that actually made the reservation there. So that I can search around there and see um, which spaces would be available for me to book. So I can still see the green ones are the ones that I can book. So let's say I want to book this one because I want to sit between those two employees. I can just select it, add it to my basket, and then next. And then it's going to prompt me with adding all the information based on uh, the subject, who am I making the reservation for, 
do I want to add notes? And then we can see I'm getting a new, uh, a new message here, a new item for me to actually uh, add. So it's asking me based on how the, the way the, the reservation admin has configured it in the reservable module, which the, when they've added the record producer to prompt me with more uh, questions, uh, more fields to, for me to fill out when I make the reservation. It's asking me to, to be able to fill out the cost center. So what I can do is just select from a drop down. It could also be a question where I have to type something in. It could be multiple questions. Right now there's only one uh, that's being requested, but they, we can imagine that there could be five or six uh, different questions uh, that I would need to complete to make sure that uh, my team uh, that then uh, cross checks and creates reporting on these different reservations has all the information that they require. I mean, again, if you have any questions, uh, reach out to Elizabeth or, or myself. Um, my email is brett.fisher at servicenow.com and Elizabeth is elizabeth.bowling at servicenow.com. Uh, we are happy to, uh, to answer any questions you have uh, related to the product. So thanks so much for joining today and um, uh, have a great, uh, great week, uh, rest of the week and weekend ahead.